you know, far from the Archie, Richie, Rich, Fantastic Four style comic books of years gone by, 21st century comic books and graphic no novels garner a significant readership. Author Robert James Lidke has created a series called Eyewitness, in which he weaves events from the book of Acts into the life of a modern day forensic archaeologist. Please welcome Robert James Lidke. Robert, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me, Robert. Yeah. You know, I throw out those terms comic books. I think people understand what that means, yeah. Superman, etc. Graphic novel, they may not be sure of. And when you open the pages of a graphic novel, it looks remarkably like a comic book. That's right. <laughs> so would you um, differentiate those? Well, for you us? know, graphic novel is really the, the book industry term for this whole genre of publishing. And for people that didn't grow up being a comic geek like I did, mm -hmm. uh, it's like, what? Graphic? You mean graphic like in right. graphic sex or graphic violence? Especially right. when I talk to Christian audiences, right. I always start with this. And it's like, no, graphic in that it's fully illustrated. Mm -hmm. and, and so think of a graphic novel as a novel that's fully illustrated, and there you go. There's your answer to it. So basically okay. anything you can find in a novel, you can find in a graphic novel in theory. Okay. Well, you're... Uh you were a comic book aficionado, I would imagine, mm -hmm. growing up. Did you just, is that your form of entertainment or, or education? Oh, it was one of them. Yeah. Uh, but I was also gifted with artistic talent mm -hmm. from a very early age. When I was in second grade, the teachers were passing me from room to room to do portraits of them. So is that I, right? Yeah, so I had a gift that it reared its head really early. Yes. And I think that's what attracted me to comic books uh, was the, the, the visual nature of it. And so uh, my brother mm -hmm. and I had, had stacks and stacks of pads of our own little comics we had started creating. So I, I not only read it as entertainment, I started to be drawn to the art form itself. And you went on and made a career in the comic right. book industry. Right. I, uh, I owned a, actually a couple comic shops, mm -hmm. which I, I, I did to learn the industry kind of from the inside and out. And at the same time, I was, I was creating things in the back. Background. And back in the 90s, I, I produced a, a science fiction-based uh, comic called Template. Okay. And uh, and then uh, actually went out of the business, and then was drawn back into it in uh, 2002 to uh, start production on Eyewitness. What made that transition? Because you were out of the business, and you come back in to start your start your own. Mm -hmm. I had. Uh, uh, I had I said, got out of comic book business. I was in another business with my wife, and I had uh, three people die very close to me: uh, my father, my one of my oldest and best friends, and then a business mentor. Mm -hmm. And it, it it made me seek out the Lord for the first time in my life and look mm -hmm. for answers and as far as my value and, and where I fit, fit in the big picture because mm -hmm. I, I just didn't find a place for myself. So I actually uh, accepted Christ in my life in, in 99 for the first time and became born again. Mm -hmm. And then for the next couple of years, I was on a journey and, and my prayers were always, God, show me what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I, I have something I'm supposed to do, but I just don't know what it is. And uh, in 2000, he planted a seed for what became the first graphic novel in the series, Eyewitness, a Fictional Tale and Absolute Truth, and that was to, to create a frank depiction, visually accurate, of, of the Passion Week. And this is before, mind you, Mel Gibson even right. announced the Passion of the Christ. Okay. So uh, I had to, to pray on that quite a bit and decided that, hey, you know what, he's doing something very different than I'm doing. Yeah. But, and so I went forward. But it took me two years because I didn't think I was going to do it. I just mm -hmm. thought somebody should. Well, set that up. How did, it, how did you present that in comic book form? Well, <laughs> it was, okay, I had an idea what you could do with the Passion Week and what I wanted to do, but I didn't think it would be uh, widely received or right. I thought it would be a very finite audience. So I kind of kept it in the back of my mind. It was like that mustard seed mm -hmm. the Lord planted that kept growing in my head and eventually encapsulating the biblical adaptation within a modern-day action-adventure story. Don't, don't ask me what would the inter original inspiration is. Really? It just came to me. I, I say through divine inspiration, yeah. and, and that kind of developed. And over two years, I created the, the structure of, of the series, which is the intermingling of the two different kind of stories yeah. running alongside each other. You almost, I almost think you would have a hard time telling the story the way you do with, without this comic book graphic novel oh, style. Yeah. It would be very difficult. It, because you immediately know when you switch, or in a book you don't really tell, you can't tell sometimes when you're going back and he is envisioning the Apostle Paul, for instance, in the book Rise of the Apostle. It, but in the book you can clearly see when it goes from modern day, the page, and then you turn the page and suddenly you are at the Apostle Paul. Right. So the first one was on the Passion, the second one was on... Yeah, the second one picks it up right where the, the Passion story leads off. The, the biblical narrative is on the morning of the resurrection and then uh, that one will carry through uh, Saul meeting Jesus on the road to Damascus. Mm. And then the third book, uh, Rise of the Apostle, starts exactly where that one leads mm -hmm. off. You start with 
uh, Saul, uh, Saul's encounter, and I really go into depth in, in that and in, in the transformation Saul makes both inside and outside to morph into the Apostle Paul. And then we're going to carry all the way through to uh, his stoning at Lystra. Mm. And then the fourth and final book, which is tentatively titled Eyewitness the Unknown God, will pick up the story right at that narrative and take it all the way through to, to Paul's uh, arrival in Rome. Mm. You're now, telling most of the book of the Acts of the Apostles right. then. Well, the, the goal is, when I tell people, it's, it's telling the story of the birth pains of the Christian faith mm. from the Passion Week through, through Paul getting the, to Rome, which was his goal, yeah. to bring the word to Rome. And then at the same time, we have the modern day story. And that is uh, action adventure. Think about any action adventure yeah. you've seen. We have snipers, we have terrorist bombings, we have all kinds of intrigue going on. But really, it's, it's a metaphor both for, for my walk from a skeptic to becoming uh, a man of God. Hmm. But the main character, forensic archaeologist Dr. Terry Harper, starts out as a, a skeptical man of science looking for proof so he can embrace faith, chooses to embrace faith, and then through this, this series and, and through the fourth book, you'll find out, or he finds out, that he's designed to, to be a tool for God, mm. even though he started out as a skeptic. Mm. It is a fascinating book. I wrote this series for exactly who I was when I was in my teens. A skeptic, mm -hmm. uh, even though I was a quote-unquote Lutheran, we, you know, I never had gotten the spirit in my life. Going to church for me was just another day from mm -hmm. school. Uh, but skeptic, reader of comics, graphic novels, love movies, everything else. And so I, I designed this to not only be enlightening and share the story of the Gospels, but also be entertaining. Mm -hmm. Because I, I didn't write this, per se, to be a, a teaching tool for Sunday school classes, even though I've heard from youth ministers they are using it mm -hmm. for that because it, it's, it's really easy to yeah. keep kids' attention. I wrote it for... Uh, young people who who aren't going to their churches, they're not going to youth groups, and they're most certainly not reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. But they love a good story, and they love comic and graphic novel style of storytelling. I hear over and over, boys don't read. You can't write a book for young men because they're not going to read it. Mm -hmm. They do read these kinds of books. Yes, they do. They do. Um, and the, the idea of weaving in the Apostle Paul. Why did you choose the Apostle Paul? Uh, I just, uh, I relate to him quite a bit yeah. myself. And... Uh, the skeptic. You know, yeah, know. yeah. And, and to me, it's, it's one of the great, I think, undersold mm -hmm. stories of the Bible. I mean, you know, Ten Commandments, everyone knows that yeah. from the film. Uh, Jesus' story, obviously, uh, and, and some of the other Old Testament mm -hmm. stories. But this is one of the greatest stories of transformation that I think is applicable today. Yeah. That there's people out here, especially in our postmodern world, <laughs> that don't want to be believers or, or don't think they can be believers. Well, here was the yeah. world's biggest skeptic in the ministry of, of Jesus and the Nazarenes originally, and he becomes one of his biggest advocates. If you want to tell the story of Christ, and if you want to tell the story of um, the history of Christianity, and if you want to reach that and tell that to a teenage or a young man from probably nine, eight, nine, ten years old up to their tw early 20s, this is a format that they will read that will introduce them to the tenets of the faith. I mean, it really is it, It's a very approachable book. And you know what? Thank you that God brought you all the way through that leap of faith and helped you understand that what you had been grounded in early on has a place in today's world to reach young men for Christ. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. Here. Absolutely.